The many worlds of Dungeons & Dragons are home to a variety of creatures, both terrible and ridiculous. One small subset of creatures are stranger than the others. These creatures are known as aberrations. Hello and welcome to the return of Top 5 here on Arcana Check. Sometimes created by wild magic, sometimes by dark spells, aberrations are unnatural to whatever world they call home. Today, we'll take a look at my top five creepiest and weirdest aberrations in Dungeons & Dragons. Before I begin the countdown, I would like to give an honorable mention to an aberration that might top many people's lists, the Flumph. The Flumph is an interesting case amongst aberrations. It's the only creature of this type that is good aligned, with a flat, saucer-like body with tentacles hanging below and a long eye stalks protruding from the top of its body, the flump floats around the Underdark, often near strong sources of psionic energy such as aboliths and mind flayers as they feed on this energy. If your party comes across a flump, don't expect this benevolent creature to aid you in battles, as the flump is naturally a cowardly creature, hence why it only receives an honorable mention in this list. With my honorable mention out of the way, let's get on with my top 5 aberrations in Dungeons & Dragons. Number 5. Morkoth The Morkoth is a truly strange creature, described as having either a wide mouth filled with sharp teeth, or a squid-like beak. It has legs like a lobster coming from its midsection, and 8 octopus-like tentacles protruding below its body. The Morkoth also has a dorsal fin like a shark running down the center of its back, though this can sometimes be hidden by the treasures of its victims collected over years of feeding. With these physical aspects, it should come as no surprise that the Morkoth calls the water its home. The Morkoth cares about one thing, feeding. It has been known to make deals with other predatory creatures in exchange for prey, though it will also ally with weaker creatures in order to betray them as a food source. The Morkoth's primary weapon is a strong hypnotic pattern in which they lull their prey to them and use their sharp teeth or beaks to bite and destroy their meal. The most famous Morkoth of modern times would have to be Vokodo, the creature who held the island of Rumblecusp hostage until he was dispatched by the Mighty Nine in the second campaign of the popular D&D stream Critical Role. Unlike other Morkoths, Vokodo, or Guacamole as the Mighty, N Mighty Nine called him, was supercharged by the elemental powers of the volcano that he had turned into his lair. After using his own psionic powers against him, the Mighty Nine were able to vanquish Vokodo and free the residents of Rumblecusp. Number 4. Aboleth. At number 4 we have perhaps the most terrifying creature of the deeps, the Aboleth. This underwater aberration has an eel-like body, but with a fish's tail and four tentacles that run the length of its body, sporting three eyes all in line with each other and, in a, and a circular mouth with razor-sharp teeth. The aboleth averages out at about 20 feet, though because aboleths continue to grow as they age, the more ancient of these creatures can reach upwards of 40 feet in length. If these physical characteristics weren't bad enough, the aboleth is also covered in a mucus that it produces. This mucus allows it to breathe both underwater and on land. Oh yeah, you're not even safe from the aboleth when you're out of the water. While very useful and extremely gross, if the aboleth's ability to produce mucus is taken away, it will suffocate and die. With all of these physical traits, you would think that the aboleth's physical abilities are why it's so terrifying. But oh no, just because it can grapple you, drown you, bite you, and probably cover you in snot, these are just the tip of the iceberg. The aboleth is also a powerful psionic creature. It can telepathically probe creatures it can see to determine that creature's greatest desires. The aboleth can also release a mucus cloud into the water that can create a disease within a creature that makes it so the victim is only able to breathe underwater for up to four hours. Any creature that touches the aboleth opens itself up to this disease. But wait, there's more! The aboleth also has the ability to telepathically enslave other creatures. 
For player characters, this works like the Charm ability, which they can attempt to save from. For other creatures, however, the Aboleth has been known to create slaves known as Servitors, completely loyal to the Aboleth and bound to it by its telepathic powers, as well as through a powerful ritual. All in all, the Aboleth is not something most heroes look forward to facing. Number 3. Sladi. Having been created by the chaotic energy absorbed by an ancient artifact known as the Spawning Stone, the Sladi are a toad-like race of creatures that call Limbo their home and are sworn enemies to all Modrons. Beings of pure chaos, the Sladi live for two things, causing death and producing more Sladi. These aberrations are broken down into five different types, the red, blue, green, gray, and death Sladi. While all Sladi are fearsome physical fighters, each type also has unique abilities that make them terrifying opponents. The green Slod is an innate magic user, having the ability to change its shape into a humanoid in order to go undetected. It also has a number of spells at its disposal, which it can use against heroes. The gray Slod is both a fighter and a spellcaster. Having mastered the use of a greatsword, this variety is even more deadly in hand-to-hand -hand combat than most of its brethren, but this is simply an added benefit to its spellcasting abilities. Like the green slod, the gray can also change its shape and cast even more destructive spells. The death slotty are, for all intents and purposes, the masters of this species. These are gray slotty that have been transformed by their control of the spawning stone. Their control over all other Sladi are absolute, and they will aim hordes of the other types, especially red and blue Sladi, at their victims in order to propagate the species. They are visually indistinct from gray Sladi, as are their physical and magical abilities, though they hit harder and have deadlier spells at their beck and call. What makes them truly terrifying is their ability to control all other Sladi. The red and blue Sladi may be the more common types of Sladi with no magic at their disposal. They each have a unique ability that makes them perhaps the more terrifying of all the Sladi. When a red Slod claws a human opponent, there's a chance that it will implant a Slod egg into its victim from a gland located under one of its claws. Over three months, this egg will migrate to the host's chest cavity where it gestates and becomes a Slod tadpole. Upon its birth, the Slod Tadpole will chew its way through the host's chest, killing its victim. This Tadpole will then transform into either a blue Slod or a green Slod, depending upon the host's magical abilities. On the plus side, if the host is cured of disease before the Tadpole hatches, the unborn Slod will be disintegrated, thus saving the host. In a similar, if not more frightening way, when a blue Slod claws a human opponent, it can infect its victim with a disease known as the Chaos Phage. While infected, the victim will lose health every 24 hours until it dies. Upon death, the humanoid instantly transforms into either a red slot or a green slot, again dependent on the host's magical abilities. Even worse, once infected, the Chaos Phage can only be cured through a wish spell. Number 2. Beholder one of the most iconic looking creatures in all of Dungeons & Dragons, the Beholder is both terrifying and intriguing, which is part of its deadly charm. Usually calling the Underdark its home, the Beholder is feared not only because of its amazing power and violent tendencies, but also because the Beholder is one of the most intelligent monsters in the game. Physically speaking, the Beholder's body can be broken down into only a few parts. Having no limbs, its entire body is a massive floating orb with a large cyclops-like eye and a mouth full of razor-sharp teeth. Protruding from the top of its body are ten tentacle-like eye stalks. The skin of a beholder is made up of a stony substance that is as strong as steel, and often there are bony spikes that surround the beholder's body. The eye stalks are where the beholder's terrifying magical powers come from. Each eye stalk is able to emit a different type of energy at its opponent. The charm ray basically hypnotizes an enemy, allowing the Beholder to take its sweet time dealing with them. The Paralyzing Ray can temporarily paralyze an opponent, again allowing the Beholder to take its time. The Fear Ray causes a Beholder's opponent to be frightened, either causing it to run away or making any attack made against the Beholder to be less successful. 
The slowing ray makes it more difficult for the beholder's opponent to move and limits its ability to attack. The enervation ray strikes the beholder's opponent with a blast of pure necrotic energy. The telekinetic ray not only moves the beholder's opponent, but it also restrains it. The sleep ray is really unfortunate. Any opponent hit with this falls asleep for one minute, allowing the beholder plenty of time to choose its next action. The petrification ray turns the opponent to stone, which can only be cured through greater restoration. The disintegration ray sounds worse than its effect. Namely, any creature hit by this eye ray is dealt an average of 45 points of damage. However, if this puts the creature to zero hit points, it immediately turns into a pile of ash and is permanently dead. And the final eye ray of the beholder is the death ray. Similar to the disintegration ray, the death ray doesn't automatically kill a beholder's opponent, but if it does reduce the opponent to zero hit points, it dies automatically. As if these powers weren't already terrifying enough, some beholders have been known to be able to cast a cone of anti-magic from their main eye, causing any spells cast from that cone automatically fail. One of the most interesting things about beholders is how they reproduce. Unlike most living creatures, beholders are spawned from the dreams of other beholders. According to Volo's Guide to Monsters, on extremely rare occasions, when a beholder dreams of another beholder, the act creates a warp in reality, from which a new, fully formed beholder springs forth unbidden, seemingly having appeared out of thin air in a nearby space. Most often, the result of this birth is that the two beholders seek to destroy each other. Beholders are nearly all xenophobic and paranoid, which is often its opponent's best psychological weapon against it. Number 1. Mind Flare To me, there is no greater nor more terrifying type of aberration than the Mind Flare. While nightmarish, the Mind Flare's body shares many traits with most humanoids. It is roughly the same size, shape, and has the same physical makeup, being no stronger than your average human. This, however, is where the comparison with a human ends. The color of a Mind Flare's soft, slug-like skin ranges from mauve to greenish violet and is often covered in an ill-smelling mucus. The most notable physical characteristic of the Mind Flare is its elongated head, from which octopus-like tentacles protrude from the area where its mouth ought to be. The Mind Flare feeds on one thing, the brains of other sentient creatures. Unsurprisingly, the Mind Flare's greatest strength comes in its psionic abilities, not only can it cast spells using its mind, but it can also emit a strong mind blast at its opponents, damaging them and stunning them at the same time. Mind flayers are extremely intelligent, and their ability to read the thoughts of their enemies has served them throughout their clouded history. No one knows the true origins of the mind flayers. Some have said that they are time travelers from a distant future, others that they are travelers from a different plane of existence. Whichever case is true, it is known that the Mind Flayers have subjugated many other races, adding to both their power and their food source. The two most notable races that were enslaved are also the two that escaped bonded, though their very essence was forever scarred. The Duragar, originally a clan of dwarves, were able to escape bondage thanks to the help of the evil god Ladagur, but their time and service to the Mind Flayers left them cruel and gave them a desire to enslave other races they felt were beneath them. They were also left sensitive to sunlight, forcing them to live deep in the Underdark, as well as bestowing them some psionic abilities and the ability to survive in harsh conditions. The Mind Flayers' greatest enemy was once its most docile slave. The Gith were a race of humanoid creatures enslaved for generations by the Mind Flayers until a great leader named Gith arose to lead them to success against their masters. Shortly after winning their freedom, another leader named Xerthamon challenged Gith's strict vengeful motives. This rift caused the Gith people to split into two different cultures, the Gith Yankee and the Gith Zarai, both of whom despised the other. The Gith Yankee travel the Astral Sea, plundering where they can and always hunting the Mind Flayers who once oppressed them. The Gith Zarai follow a path of enlightenment and wisdom, living mostly peaceful lives in limbo. Though, if they encounter Mind Flayers, they will show their heritage and stop at nothing to destroy their ancient enemy. 
The Mind Flayers, as a race, are devastating in their efficiency to break and conquer their enemy. A major factor to this is the fact that the Mind Flayers operate within a hive mind, sharing their thoughts, motivations, and plans of the entire hive. This causes them to be ruthlessly efficient. This hive is, in and of itself, controlled by a single creature, the Elder Brain. This creature, which is a giant brain with tentacles, is the final stage of a Mind Flayer's life cycle. The Elder Brain is the control center of the Mind Flayer's hive mind, sharing its visions of domination with its kin. With all that said, the Mind Flayer is obviously dangerous. It is obviously cruel and ruthless. But there is one last fact about the Mind Flayer that gives it the number one spot on this list. The way a Mind Flayer is created. In order to reproduce, a Mind Flayer will take an illithid tadpole and insert it into a humanoid creature. As the tadpole grows, feeding on the brain of its host, it takes over the body, warping it physically into the form of an adult Mind Flayer, while destroying the host's mind and taking over for itself. And there you have my top 5 aberrations in Dungeons & Dragons. Do you agree? Disagree? Share your thoughts in the comments section down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe in order to see similar content right here on Arcana Check. Have yourselves a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.